billion. China stood at the lowest level since 2010 in terms of its holdings, though this past March they did reverse course. This bears close watching because a sell-off may be a strong indicator of planned aggression. But I think the area where we really need to focus, and where I would agree with you, Chairman, I'm not sure the Treasury has a plan, is how do we deal with the fact that the size, the sheer size of the Chinese economy dwarfs what we've been contending with in the form of Iran, Russia, and so on. One of the first things the Biden administration did in the wake of Russia's attack was sanctions, start sanctioning Russian banks and de-swifting them. And that's one thing when you're going after an economy smaller than the size of Texas. It's quite another when you consider that out of the 100 largest banks in the world, China has 20, and all four of the top four are Chinese banks. That is why many within the Treasury contended when I was there, and they will contend to this day, that these Chinese banks are simply too big to sanction. I don't agree that we can allow that to stand, but I do believe we have to start taking very swift action to put us in a situation where we could take punitive measures on these banks if necessary. And to that end, it is good that the market is beginning to respond to Chinese bellicose rhetoric. But we've seen the Chinese stock market and the value of the capitalization of Chinese companies come way down. We've also seen a drop in most of the major indexes. We've also seen the three biggest banks in the United States start to trim their exposure. But I believe we need to encourage further reduction. To that end, one of the things we should do is increase the capital requirements on banks that have substantial exposure. We need to ensure that our largest banks can withstand the systemic, the systemic shocks that would arise from the tit-for-tat with China. We also need to recognize, as the Atlanta Council has pointed out, that China holds over five billion in various liabilities to Western investors. Uh, that they could hold hostage in the event of a uh, sanctions war. We need to begin educating our pension funds and our investment funds on the substantial risk that they run by leaving those assets in China. Again, I appreciate the chance to testify before this committee, and I look forward to your questions. All right. Now, you see the what it was talking about, how Russia and China is uh, dumping treasury bonds. Now, as you can see, as he's talking, okay, how China getting gold too, okay? And before the situation took off in Ukraine, they say Russia, if I, if I ain't mistaken, if I heard it right, y'all can go back and rewind the video. And my numbers are all, you know what I'm saying, the video will tell you. But I, I wanna say Russia had 90 billion in treasury bonds and they end up dumping down, they end up dumping uh, treasury bonds and now they got like 15 billion. So that's a, that's a lot of uh, dumping to get rid of that debt, okay? To get rid of that debt from the treasury bonds. And then they said China uh, was dumping their treasury bonds they said they had like a hundred and something big, I want to say. They started to dump their treasury bonds, but they start, uh, I guess, slowing down or high, pick it back up or whatever. But they were saying that's an indication that, uh, that's an indication of war concerning China going into uh, Taiwan because that's what uh, uh, Russia did uh, before they went into Ukraine. So. What they doing is uh, basically bracing for the sanctions that, that's what Russia did, brace for the sanctions that America was gonna put on them when they went in because the Russians knew America was gonna do that. Now, when you put sanctions on the nation, right, and the nation got resources and they got money and they can't trade in that swift system, what they gonna do is find alternatives Okay, and by them finding alternatives, that's gonna cause the uh, the U.S. dollar to lose its power concerning domination. Okay, that's gonna cause the U.S. to lose its power concerning domination on the world stage concerning economic. Okay, you know, uh, Federal Reserve notes concerning economic. Federal Reserve notes. So when the world see that, and these smaller countries, these big countries see that how Russia braced itself, they gonna follow suit. 
and they're going to lean on a country that was able to survive them sanctions. Because, see, the world outside of America, they study in the situation that's going on in Ukraine, man. Right? And according to prophecy, Russia is the one that's going to bring down Babylon, man. Right? And you got to get out of... Uh, you, can, you can't depend solely... If you're going to go to war with somebody, you can't depend solely on... Uh, their money system. You gotta get with your own so you can continue uh, going on in this war. And that's what Russia has done. That's why they ain't stopping, man, because they have braced for the blows concerning the sanctions. And that's what China is doing. Bracing for the blows concerning the sanctions. Now, you heard that government officials say, look, China banks are too big to sanction in that video. They too big to sink, and they get gold, man. And they get gold, man. So that lets me know that war is on the horizon, man. Just listening and looking at that, war is on the horizon, on the horizon, and the American dollar is uh, being, uh, uh, how can I say it? Well, it's under threat. It's under threat because. Uh, uh, by them doing that, that uh, separates them from America having a grip on it. America don't want nations to separate themselves from where America got a grip on it. So the American dollar is under threat by them doing what they're doing. Okay? So give me what you got. Let me see what we get. All right, give me X. Give me X. Now, the reason why I'm reading this is because the name of Yahweh Bashmel Shai is more powerful than gold or silver, man. Right? And that's what we lean on. Yahweh Bashmel Shai. Those are our powers, man. Okay? Now, Esau Edom coming with this chip, right? Which is the mark of the beast. And he's able to cause people to uh, see. He's able to call the paralyzed to walk. That's the left-hand side, okay? Those are miracles that the left-hand side is able to do, okay? But we're gonna read the miracles concerning the right-hand side believing in the name of Yahweh Shemel was shot. So give me what you got, bro, Acts the third chapter. This is a. <clears throat> this is Acts chapter three, verse one. It says now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Go ahead who seeing Peter and John about, about to go into the temple asking acts and, and arms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, silver and gold have I none. So. I'm going to say this right here. They said, silver and gold, I have none. You can't buy this knowledge, okay? You can't buy this understanding. This gift of understanding and the power that come from on high, you can't buy it, man. Okay? You can't buy it. That's the mercy of Yahweh Shema Shai if you get it. Go ahead, bro. But such as I give, <clears throat> so like, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Yahweh, of Yahweh Shai of Mashiach of Nazareth, raise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. See? So this guy was paralyzed. 
So they called on the name of Yahweh Shem Al on the right hand side, and he was able to walk. Man. That's power, man. Esau gonna do it on the left hand side with that chip. The men of the Lord gonna do it on the right hand side in the name of Yahweh Shem Al Go ahead. And he lived, he leaped, he, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising the most high. See? What verse is that? That was eight. Go ahead. It's verse nine. And all the people saw him walking and praising the most high. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amaze, amazement at, at the which had happened unto him. So that's how the people gonna be looking at the men of the Lord when the men of the Lord do them miracles. They gonna be worried about money, man. They gonna be amazed and, and marveling at the miracles that the men of the Lord don't do, man. You see? So this is a spiritual battle, man. You got the left hand side, you got the right hand side, man. And people gonna be amazed at what Esau Edom gonna do concerning that chip and how people gonna walk and they gonna be able to see. But once they see the men of the Lord doing it on the right hand side, that's gonna super succeed what Esau is doing. Okay? That's gonna super succeed what Esau is doing. Cause that's balance, man, and it's a spiritual war, man. And that's gonna show dominant in the earth, man. Okay? Okay? Up under Yahweh by Shem Al Shai, man. The men of the Lord are gonna be the dominant in the earth, man. That's the change in the worlds, man. Okay? That's the change in the worlds, man. So, that's it on that particular verse. So, Alright. So, let's see what I can pull out a little bit more concerning this, uh, this uh this committee right concerning uh, uh what they were talking about how the uh dollar dominance let's see you have something to say ah no oh, okay let's see if, uh This the last, this the last part. I'm gonna let y'all hear it, and we gonna start bringing out uh, more scriptures. If I can get ya, I start there and just let it. It's not getting. Uh, here we go. Is that one of the things that they could do, which would be very concerning uh, if they wind up having larger reserves of gold than we believe, is they could start issuing one uh, gold denominated, gold backed one contracts. That would further their ambition for introducing the one on the stage. But at the moment, the one is not a widely held reserve currency. In fact, uh, a third of all one reserves are sitting in Russia. Suggesting perhaps that they go into Taiwan. How would this affect our reserve currency status with them? Basically, the world will be in a lockdown position for a period of time until that situation is resolved. <clears throat> because they'll invade, we'll sanction, and then off we go. And so, uh, I think a couple of you talked about the, the, the sanctions being something we have to watch very, watch very carefully about how we manipulate that. It can be counterproductive. So, I'd like to come in. Thank you for a uh, great question. Um, you know, my own view on China here is that their, their short-term efforts are focused primarily on increasing their resilience and autonomy 
uh, in the event of a future sanctionings uh, package from the United States, perhaps uh, as a result of, uh, of a conflict with Taiwan. Their focus, I think, is uh, is, is on uh, trade settlement uh, and cross-border payments. That's where I think we're seeing most of uh, the developments uh, right now. Around 20 percent of China's cross-border trade is settled in its own currency. That's up over the last few years after reaching 30 percent prior to 2015. The reason they're focused on that is I think the the uh, the strength of our sanctions are actually more on uh, stopping uh, right uh, firms, individuals, and uh, government institutions from participating in cross-border trade and payments, more so than even freezing assets, which is sort of a one-time, one-off right sanctions. Whereas cutting actors off from from banks means right your ability to participate in cross-border trade, debt repayment, etc., uh, is constrained for so long as those sanctions are in place. And so the Chinese have been interested, I think, in. Uh, the use of the yuan through uh, networks like the cross-border interbank payment system, SIPs, right, piloting uh, ECNY, other things like that, that will eliminate um, their uh, their reliance 100% uh, on using the dollar and the dollar system. Yes, I would like to really follow the little cards to your gold command. Yeah, so I want to say that's it. There's some more on it, but that you get the you get the picture. You know what I'm saying? You get the picture concerning uh, how these nations are uh, getting gold, man. They getting gold, man, and that's real money, man. Like I was saying last week. Uh, now we're gonna deal with this treasury bonds because they say. Uh, concerning treasury bonds. Now, uh, a treasury bond, let me see. What is the meaning of a treasury bond? According to Kukurkus, treasury bonds are debt securities issued by the government. Essentially, you're loaning money to the government by purchasing a bond at a predetermined interest rate. In turn, the government will pay you a fixed interest rate for a set duration of time. So, a treasury bond is a loan. So, what? So, me just looking at that, these countries are, it says, these, these, these uh, countries are dumping the debt that been loaned to them by America, which is Federal Reserve. Okay? They dump it. And they getting away from that debt. Okay? Me just looking. Okay? And, uh, By them, by, by them getting a loan and getting in debt, they invest in that American dollar, okay? But now, when they get that loan, the treasury bond is like a loan, that's a debt. And that, and, and countries are, are investing in America when they receive that, uh, that treasury bond. But when they dump it, that means they're no, no longer investing in America and they getting out of the debt uh, note. Now, when America see that, that's an act of war because they don't have that uh, grip on them to where they can sanction that country. You see? It's all about power and who controls the money system. And the money system of America is under threat right now, man. Uh, dealing with these other nations. They're, they are looking to get away from it, man. And by them looking to get away from it, and when they do it, the economy gonna tank, and they gonna have to come with that central bank digital currency, man. They gonna have to come with that chip, man, in order to save America from the conditions that it's in. And that's gonna be their solution to save it, that chip, man. 
But give me what you got, bro. Alright, this is uh let me see what you do at first. Start at the top. The key, the key is in uh uh the key is in first six, but we're gonna start it up. Alright. All right. The key is in verse 6 in Habakkuk chapter 2. Go ahead, bro. <clears throat> All right, this is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me <clears throat> and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Go ahead. And Yahweh by Shem Yahushak answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is set, so like, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and no, and not lie. Go ahead. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will, it will surely come. It will not tarry. The collapse of the dollar will surely come, man. Go ahead, bro. It says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. That's but, talking about Esau, Edom. All right, the soul that's lifted up in him is not upright in him. Go ahead. But the just shall live by his faith. We're going to live by faith and trust in Yahweh from outside. Go ahead. Yeah, also, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. He transgressed by wine, man. The disproportion and the uh, abominable, uh, abominable, uh, uh, false balance of money that's a that's a way of uh, uh, nations consuming these are even wine man his philosophy his way that money should be circulated in the earth not using real money man okay so he transgets by wine man okay he's going over and beyond these are even is going over and beyond uh, what real money is, man, which is gold and silver, man. So he transgressed by wine, man. Go ahead. Neither keep it at home. Go ahead. Who enlarges his desire as hell. So he around in all these other nations, uh, land, strong woman causing war to get the resources and to have dominance over them, to colonize them. Go ahead. And is as death and cannot be satisfied, mm -hmm. but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. He done it. Go ahead. Verse 6 Shall not all these take up a parable against him? So that's why the dollar is under threat. You see? That's why the dollar is under threat now. Go ahead. And a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth. That which is not his. Woe means destruction. So Esau Edom is increasing that which is not his, man. Them resources and colonize the people, man. See? Go ahead. How long he questions and to him added himself with thick clay. Now let's look that up in a different translation. Verse 6. That latest themselves with thick clay. Okay? So, you can look at the debt clock concerning America. America's in debt, man. They are not uh, free from debt, man. And these nations are uh, looking for ways to get out of debt with America. That's why they dump the treasury bond. They no longer want to invest in the American dollar in America, man. You see? And they want to trade amongst themselves in their own currency and using gold. Now you heard that Edomite talk about how uh, if China uh, 
back to you on with gold, uh, what it would do to the dollar, man. That would that would be devastating to the dollar, man, because people would start trusting in the yuan, man. And if Russia do it in the ruble, man, that would supersede that dollar, man. And people will have more faith in Russia currency, which is ruble, and uh, Chinese currency, which is yuan, man. And they will put the dollar bill on the back burner and say, look, we ain't investing in that no more. Y'all ain't back by nothing. Y'all ain't got no resources. And if y'all didn't know, America have not sanctioned Russia on oil, man. If y'all didn't know that, okay? I'm just giving you that. New America ain't sanctioned Russia on no oil, man. All right, this is uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 6 in the Bible Hub. Uh, this is the New International Version. It says, Will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes, him, makes himself wealthy by extor extortion? Yep. Not giving real money. Not using real money. That's basically extortion, man. You're extorting people for their goods, man. You see, but that 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 false balance is an abomination, man. You see, by creating the Federal Reserve, okay, and the idea was at 1912, but it came to the public in 1913, Jekyll Island, by creating that Federal Reserve and issuing the currency that people use to buy items and use that currency as the world dominant currency on the stage, that's extortion, man. Okay? For you to make somebody uh, believe that that's real currency. Matter of fact, let's look up the word extortion. The regular Google or uh, online etymology, any one of them. This is a uh Extortion is a noun in the online etymology dictionary. It says the act of extort, extorting, extorting, the act or of wrestling anything from a person by force. See, you force people to continue uh, dealing with that dollar because if they don't do it, guess what they do? Put sanctions on them. 